now we can actually take a look at you know some of the uh, typical uh, bending moment and shear force diagrams that we typically come across and the reason these are actually important is you know because uh, these are the actual real life structures which which we typically deal with i mean uh, we don't really deal into very uh, advanced type of you know i mean for example let's say if it's a simply supported beam i mean most of us would think okay this is a very basic type of beam but then in reality like most of the structures that we typically see say in a building or a commercial building or airports and things like that they're actually say single span or multi span beams so that's the reason i just wanted to kind of cover like some of these uh, aspects here so uh, so first of all let's just consider say if it's a simply supported beam and then we have say a concentrated load acting so what we would see is more often than not like the maximum moment more which is produced in the beam would be under the point load itself right so that's one thing i mean whenever we are coming up with any shear for a uh, bending moment diagram and then if there's a point load we always need to like see and obviously this is for a pin pin support so in that case the maximum moment produced is only at where the uh, concentrated load is acting and that's what this bending moment diagram here kind of indicates but then when you look at the shear force diagram so over there what we are seeing is like we have a uh, you know a drop in the shear force uh, right at where the uh, point load is acting and that drop is basically nothing but equal the magnitude of the drop from say this point here to this point that's nothing but the applied load so whenever you see a point load in any beam that means whenever you look at the shear force diagram of that beam so the drop in that shear force diagram or i mean that has to be the magnitude of the drop has to be equal to the applied concentrated load there and then similarly now this was for a pinned pinned beam now if you consider say a fixed fixed beam wherein you know both the supports are actually fixed so in that case this is kind of the bending moment diagram we typically uh, have so where you know we have a point load acting at this point here but then for a fixed fixed condition we can't always guarantee that the maximum moment in the beam is developed over here because so there'll be a negative moment and then there'll be a positive moment based on the sign sign convention that i had told so uh, the the maximum positive moment would definitely be uh, where the uh, point load is acting but then the uh, negative moment here uh, the magnitude of the negative moment could actually be more than the uh, positive moment magnitude uh, and that's actually applicable for a fixed fixed uh, beam condition but then if you look at the shear force diagram that's more or less similar in terms of like uh, you will have a vertical reaction there you'll have a vertical reaction here and then there'll be a drop in the shear force a sudden drop in the shear force and that's because of a presence of a point load so whenever we see a sudden drop in the shear force diagram that actually indicates there is a concentrated load present over there right uh, so that's what i am trying to kind of emphasize over here now the second would be say you know if we you know kind of consider a cantilever beam okay so if you have a cantilever beam subjected to a subjected to just one single point load say at the free end in that case uh, your bending moment diagram would be more of a linear varying diagram which is just continuously increasing so from zero it increases all the way to the maximum value uh, near the support but then the shear force is actually constant along the entire uh, length of the cantilever and then one more thing i wanted to highlight here is uh, as i mentioned before like the slope of the bending moment diagram actually indicates the shear force so since the bending moment diagram here is actually kind of a straight line so that's the reason you know uh, the slope of this is uh, actually a constant right because that's a straight line so the slope of that is constant and that's the reason you see a constant shear force over here now similarly now if you go to a uh, say a cantilever beam which is loaded intermediately so uh, beyond the point of application of load there is no response from the structure at all it just you know zero moment uh, all the way till this point and after only after this point it starts introducing that bending moment and then goes all the way to the support and then similar thing happens to the uh, shear force diagram as well wherein if you see here like all of the shear force is actually zero but then beyond the point load you are actually getting the constant shear force diagram and the constant is because of similar reason because the bending moment here is kind of uh, so the, that's actually a straight line and the uh, the slope of that is constant so uh, that's one thing now if you consider say a cantilever which is subjected to say two point loads okay so in that case if you see here uh, we don't have uh, so it starts with zero it starts i mean it just keeps increasing with you know a constant slope and then it comes across another point load here and the slope now you know increases and the reason for that being you know the shear force in this section is more than the shear force over here because the shear force over here is equal to the applied load here but then the shear force acting over here is actually a you know cumulative force which is uh, this plus this so that's the reason the shear force here is increased that's what we see in over here like you see a constant shear force here and then a sudden jump in the shear force which continues to be like that uh, till it reaches the support 
and the jump over here is nothing but that's equal to the uh, the applied force there and then as i said like since the bending moment diagram slope actually represents the uh, the slope so the slope of the bending moment diagram rather represents the shear force so since the shear force over here is less this uh, line over here is actually you know not as steep but then once you reach this section here which is beyond the uh, this load here in that case since you have a higher shear force the slope of this bending moment diagram also increases and that's the reason you see uh, increased slope here so even though these are really basic but these are very uh, fundamental things are very minute things to be aware of so that whenever we are coming up with any bending moment diagram or shear force diagram these are the things we typically try and want to qc so that you know we make sure okay these are the aspects which are actually covered now the next up being you know say if you have a cantilever mo beam which is subjected to a concentrated moment say at the free end in that case uh, along the entire beam you have actually a constant moment which is applied or constant bending moment and since the moment is actually fully constant so therefore there is no variation of moment along the length of the building so the derivative dm dx that's actually equal to zero and that's why you see in the beam there is no shear force developed so these are the some of the basic and very fundamental stuff but these are very important because this is what we typically use in our real life structures i mean most of our real life structure is nothing but a system of these kind of you know uh, single span conditions or maybe some multiple span now let's let's kind of you know just take a look at an example of a multiple or a two two span condition here so for example this condition over here what we see is a two span beam which is subjected to two point loads here like one on this side one on the other span so uh, the thing is like there's a and we have a intermediate support over here so obviously there's a continuity of the beam over here and that's the reason the kind of bending moment diagram we see here is it is zero over here because at this point there is no uh, rotational uh, degree of freedom which is being restrained same is here but then what would argue even this one is a pinned so this should have no bending moment uh, or there should not be any support reaction here right so i mean yeah that statement is correct so this diagram that we are seeing here is actually the bending moment diagram so this is not the shear force diagram so this is the uh, moment which is actually developed within the beam itself these are not the moment which is you know developed on the support so that's the reason like you see a negative moment moment over here the negative i am saying because what i said before is in, this, in terms of sign convention is bottom is the tension top is compression so that's the reason like this one is seeing a positive moment but then as you move towards the support the this kind of restrains the movement of this uh, you know beam downward so it actually is trying to pull the beam upward so that's the reason it kind of develops this kind of a a uh, curvature where the tension is at the top and compression is at the bottom and then once you start to uh, moving you know towards this kind of support uh, this support here again it's back to you know uh, say a, a positive moment here where and then again if you see like this point load here that's where you see the uh, you know one of the maximas in the moment diagram and then if you see here you see a maxima in the negative moment and then once you go over here you again see a local maxima here as well but in terms of magnitude of these moment like this moment versus this moment versus this moment all of this is actually a function of you know the stiffness of these members and the spans of this member i mean for example if this one is a 10 meter span this one is a 20 meter span it could be uh, you know that this moment is higher than this one here or maybe this one here as well but then if you have say a 20 meter span here and a 5 meter span here in that case obviously uh, this, this moment will be much higher because we know like longer the spans the higher the moment that span actually attracts so that's one aspect and then uh, if you look at the shear force diagram here so the thing is like whatever uh, supports we see here they're actually applying these vertical uh, forces on the beam right i mean if you consider the free body diagram of the beam so these supports could be re replaced with vertical forces on the beam itself so that this beam is actually in equilibrium so when you look at the shear force diagram you see a concentrated force here right so that's the reason this jump here and there's there's no intermediate loading here so that shear force remains constant and that's what we see here like that's a straight line so the slope of that would be constant and that's the reason we see a constant uh, straight line here and then once you apply a point load here we see a sudden jump in the or sudden drop rather in the uh, shear force and then uh, the shear force becomes negative if you see the slope over here and the slope over here there will be different in a sign as well as magnitude right so that's the reason i mean for example if this one is having a negative slope so this shear force is kind of negative right but then this one is having a positive slope so that's the reason this one is a positive shear so that's what also we kind of see here right so whenever we apply a point load there that's what actually happens and then once you reach this support here you again see a point load which is acting vertically upwards so that's another concentrated load that's the reason you see a jump over here back in the shear force right and the jump over here Here, like from uh, measure from you know this lowermost point to the highest point, that's nothing but that's equal to the vertical reaction that this support is inducing on the structure. 
and then so on and so forth. And then once we move to say this point load here, the constant, the force is actually constant till we reach this point load. And then there's a sudden jump again over here, and then we move back to this support, and then we see this reaction here. So this is kind of what happens, say, when you have a multiple span condition, and then you have like three stiff supports. But now if you look at this uh, diagram to the right, well, where what I've done is like, I've actually replaced the intermediate support, say a fig pin support with a spring. So what I've done actually here is I've introduced some kind of a flexibility in this support here, right? What this pin over here was doing is it was actually very effective to, you know, control the vertical uh, movement of this beam so that you know the vertical movement or the vertical deflection of this beam at this point is zero when you move to this support here that's not actually equal to zero but that's they will it will have some a deformation and that deformation multiplied with the stiffness of the spring that's actually going to induce the vertical stiffness or vertical reaction here so if you look at the bending moment diagram here that's still similar to what we see here but the difference is you know in the magnitude of the uh, moment that you see here versus here so for if everything is the same you know in terms of say loading and span and everything Thing. So if you were to compare this structure with this structure here, the vertical reaction induced in the, the structure in the left will be higher compared to that in the right. And therefore, the negative moment that's in induced in the beam over here is actually uh, much small, uh, you know, or maybe small compared to this one here. And then as you keep increasing the flexibility of this spring, or in other words, if you keep, uh, you know, uh, reducing the stiffness of this spring in that case what's going to happen is this negative moment is going to you know keep dropping down and then there might be a point where it's again a positive moment here and not a negative moment here and this moment over here the magnitude of the positive moment here actually increases compared to this one here because that load is now being redistributed to these supports and these spans so that's what uh, happens here and this is important in real life because in real life say if you have considered you know uh, the one the structure to the left so you have overestimated the negative moment that it is that the member is seeing over, over the support but then the positive moment here is kind of you know underestimated versus if you go to this support or this structure here you are underestimating the negative moment here but you are capturing a higher positive moment here right so in design just to be on the safe side uh, we just kind of you know consider the envelope say where you consider this negative moment for you know design of the member for this negative moment and then when you are considering the positive moment here for design you actually consider this moment instead of this just to kind of envelop the scenario and to be on the safer side so that's what's kind of typically uh, done i mean this is something which we actually apply on a real life uh, projects every time this kind of principle just to capture you know the worst case scenario and this is known as enveloping so after beams we can we can actually just quickly move into you know uh, some structure which is also known as frames so that a frame is nothing but our portal frames of portal frame is nothing but you know a system of beams and columns which are connected together so this is a very basic uh, you know single storied single span portal frame wherein you have a beam which is shown in green which is connected to these vertical members which are known as columns so the load path here is like whatever load the beam sees it just transfers that to the column and then from the column the load actually goes to the foundations right so uh, that's what this is so we'll just go through quickly like different types of portal frames that we typically encounter so for example say this one is first one which is the basic one say a single bay and a single storied you know portal frame then we have two bays so we have one bay here, the other bay here, but it's a single story portal frame. So that's another type of portal frame here. Then we have a single bay, but two story, right? So we have one story here, the other story is here. So that's like a two story uh, single bay portal frame. And then uh, we have like two bays and multiple stories. I mean, if just no stories like more than two, in that case, we just call it a multiple story frame. And then uh, you could also have, you know, a bunch of uh, moment frames in series. I mean, say if you have a single story building, but then you have a bunch of moment frames here or po portal frames here. So even that's a possibility. And then you could have this kind of you know, scenario as well, wherein you have multiple bays and then multiple stories, right? So just wanted to uh, touch upon some of the different types of portal frames around that we have. And these are actually real life structures as well, because if you consider any typical building, for example, say a typical RCC building, so that is basically a series of, you know, system of beams and columns. So this kind of structure is very uh, common uh, that's used. 